This video will be all about the router sled. How I built mine, some thoughts about that and considerations if you're looking to build your own, what its main use is for and some other tips and tricks concerning flattening large and odd shaped pieces of wood. And this is also kind of a tribute to one of my champions in the workshop. And that's the CMT router. The other day it suffered a crippling accident and will unfortunately have to retire as a result of that. But for some time, it has become obvious that it would have to step down either way, just to make way for newer and better machines. But more about that later in the video. Okay, so let's just first briefly touch on some of the key features of a router sled. In essence, it's a table preferably a flat table. On that table then sits a rail. This rail runs along the length of the table. On that rail rides a sled, or some people call it a gantry. Either way, on that sled or gantry rides a router, which is able to move from side to side. The cutter that protrudes at the bottom of the router is now able to access the entire surface of the table while maintaining a constant depth of cut. So whatever you put on there will then be machined perfectly flat. This is of course very useful when you're working with pieces that are either too heavy or too big to be surfaced on a jointer. I would even go as far as to say that if you have a really good and well-tuned router sled, then you might not even have the need for a traditional jointer and a planer. But of course that depends on what type of work you're doing. Take me for example. The first two woodworking machines that I bought was a jointer and a planer. Both vintage machines with a pretty big capacity and in theory I could joint something as wide as 60 centimeters on my jointer and my planer maxes out at 70 centimeters. But I would never actually try to joint a piece that wide because they are just too awkward to handle most of the time. And after quickly realizing that I then decided that I needed to build my own router sled. And so I did. Here are some pictures from November 2017 when I was putting this together in our old garage. It has since then gone through some changes here and there. And here's a SketchUp drawing of how it is as of today. And here's another drawing of what will be its next iteration. Which will be to convert this into a full-fledged CNC router. But more on that later. Let's just look at this beautiful, beautiful tiger striping medullary race and whenever I get to see stuff like this in an oak slab mm, gets my motor turning folks all right then so before I start flattening I make sure to even out the high corners I try to make them uh, the same height more or less and with a big slab like this usually the weight itself of the slab is enough to hold it down. This thing is not going to move around once the cutter starts uh, removing material. Smaller pieces, however, you would need to secure in some way. But the wedges, however, I like to just take some, some double-sided tape and put underneath the wedge as I'm sliding it in. And that usually holds it in place. And what's really obvious at first is the, the cup. So you can see it has kind of an arch like this. And the gap is how much material is gonna have to be removed on both sides, roughly. So in this case, we have about a 10 millimeter gap, which means we're gonna have to remove a total of about 20 millimeters, which is almost an inch of total thickness to get this piece totally flat. Now, since I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to work with large slabs of wood, and I had some experience welding and fabricating, 
it then came natural to me to build mine out of steel. And in hindsight, I feel I made the right choice. For me, it makes sense to have this big immovable table that I can abuse daily without ever having to worry about it. This thing is solid as a rock and it allowed me to easily modify it if I ever needed to. But if you want to build your own router sled, you can build it out of whatever materials you like. Maybe you already have a table that you use for other things that would suffice as a flat base. If so, then you only need a rail and the actual sled. And the important thing, however you decide to build your table, I like to, to make my stuff uh, adjustable. And so that's what I tried to, to, to do here. So here's what I did. I knew I wanted some adjustability. And so you can see that this, this is an I-beam. Uh, and each of these pieces of C-channels uh, have been welded to a 10 millimeter flat bar and this whole thing has been drilled there's three holes on on either side of, of one of these the bigger one is for the locking bolt to to tighten it down but if we could see underneath this there's also two holes there and there which have been drilled and tapped to receive a 12 millimeter bolt. So each of these is adjustable. So if I wanted to, I can individually raise or lower each of these runners here. Now I haven't had to do that, but if I wanted to, at least I have the ability to do that. So if you're like me, you want things to have somewhat precision. Well, <laughs> at least I have the option to dial this thing in perfectly flat. You're probably wondering what the hell happened to my router and why on earth was there an explosion? And to be honest with you, this was not the first time and I kind of had a feeling this was about to happen. When you're milling into this type of, of wood here with cracks and, and stuff, sometimes you get bark inclusions uh knots that are you know <laughs> really loose this kind of stuff sometimes get caught in the cutter and it's just <laughs> that didn't sound too good glad i had the camera rolling because that's the type of stuff oh look at that bad boy right there this type of stuff is super dangerous we need to take care of ourselves. It turns into a lethal projectile. So you better watch out. Most of the time when debris gets caught, it does not cause your router to explode. I was just unlucky this time. But hey, maybe I needed this to finally break because it's been almost two years since I bought a bunch of components to turn this into a CNC but I have never had the time to put it together. If you've seen my previous videos on the channel, then you know why. But here's to a new chapter. I will begin by machining this chunk of aluminum, which will become the mounting plate for this 10 horsepower spindle motor. And you will have the opportunity to follow along as I intend to make a series of videos about all this. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to see this story unfold. Before you leave, let me just uh, thank you for watching and I hope you're having a beautiful day.